Okay, everybody, and welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have a really cool kind of premiere for you guys of an up and coming watch from a new brand that's just going to be established this year as I'm recording this, which is in 2019. This brand is of course called Axios and they were actually founded by the guys who brought you Zelos, who've been around since 2014 and really um, bringing you very interesting uh, designs, but always high value. Um, now uh, Axios, their kind of arm, uh, you know, they're they're part of the kind of sub brand. Is they're just uh, you know they're a startup with their eye on that kind of super high value ultra versatile space. And of course, when you look at this particular design, it goes without saying that it's an ultra versatile design, right? Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, this particular silhouette, but I think uh, they actually do a nice job of jazzing it up. Of course, this particular kind of Batman layout for me is a little bit on the nose compared to a couple of their other designs uh, and color combinations that I think uh, add a little bit more life to the watch. This thing is just super versatile and, and very, very, very handsome. I had a lot of fun wearing this thing um, around and uh, it definitely is something that feels very, very solid on the wrist. Now, this type of watch is, of course, a dive watch. Some key common characteristics and design language when you're looking for a dive watch is you're going to want something, of course, that's water resistant, normal through some type of screw down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible, with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension if on bracelet. Now, this model is will be called the Ironclad Diver. And it's just in that ultra versatile, ultra capable everyday diver with a classic silhouette range. Um, now I know this particular kind of color setup, it, it doesn't vary too far away from what you've already seen uh, from Rolex, right? Uh, from the GMT uh, master watches, but they do have some really cool, fun, interesting uh, color combinations uh, on some of their other lines. Of course, this is just a prototype that I'm reviewing, uh, so I didn't really get my pick of the litter. I think this thing's handsome and I can see a ton of people wanting to buy it, but for me, I think some of the more fun, um, very reminiscent of kind of their Zelos brand um, and, and uh, really the unique color palettes that they're using, I think make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more bright, uh, but this particular model, I think, Definitely, uh, if you're looking for a Batman based diver, here's one that is really good looking. And also, it has the Batman color scheme with the blue and the black bezel, but it's not giving you any kind of phony 24 hour scale or anything like that that doesn't actually work, which I think is nice. And of course, the materials, as we go through this, you guys are going to realize this thing is a spec beast. And it is, of course, like you'd expect, quite affordable. Um, so, I mean, it's almost scary to think. Uh, as Axios being kind of an affordable offshoot of the Zelos brand, which is already extremely affordable. Uh, so just to give you guys an idea, this thing is going to be quite a spec beast, but let's go ahead and get it in hand for a closer look. All right. Now, as you can see, of course, very classic proportions there, 40 millimeters in diameter with a 13 millimeter thickness and a 46 millimeter lug to lug, which is nice and trim. And then of course, all 316L surgical grade stainless steel. We got this nice double dome sapphire so when you look at it at an angle you're not going to get a bunch of distortion there so the double dome means it's domed on the outside and on the inside which equals much less distortion. Look at that harsh angle it almost just has a magnification uh, effect to it uh, versus distortion so really nice uh, very minimal branding on this one doesn't even say the brand name on it uh, as you can see not even uh, you know really anywhere it just has this really cool uh, the a lettering there um, as far as the logo goes now the retail price on these are going to be a uh, $3.99 at least to start with guys so this is I believe it's going to go on the Kickstarter and will be funded through there and then of course there'll be different price packages and, and you know eventually when they go into full production they may raise the price a little bit but you know knowing this brand uh, it's not going to offshoot into anything crazy and they will probably be sold out before they ever can <laughs> raise the price for very long anyway because they uh, they really know kind of what the uh, community is looking for. Now the crystal of course is a sapphire with inner AR coating. This bezel is 120 click unidirectional rotating. Ooh. That's a good one. Very nice. And it lines right back up. 
Oh, one more click. Okay, look at that. Very nice. So uh, very well done there from that standpoint. Of course, you got that fully loomed ceramic insert. Very handsome. I'll let you guys take a close look there. If you guys can see any imperfections or blemishes. Uh, I haven't found any. I think this thing is executed pretty darn well. Um, so very impressive from that standpoint. Uh, now the movement inside is a, um, of course, oh, one thing to mention, signed crown. And the nice thing is actually if you look at the crown, there's a little bit of a, it's like a T-shape to it. So there's actually a little stopper there um, that's built in so it doesn't screw all the way to where these threads are going to get anywhere close. And I think that's actually to help it stay out of the way of this uh, bezel because it does have a little bit of overhang as you can see. So really nice that they thought about that and, and you know, got all the tolerances nice and tight and well executed. Um, so inside here, of course, behind this nicely uh, stamped case back is the Salita SW200, which of course is a extremely rock solid. You're going to get four hertz hacking, hand winding and whatnot. Um, great movement and you're going to have that nice sweep of eight ticks per second. So really well done from that standpoint. And of course, at this price point, that's just insane, especially in the year 2019. I mean, there were there were times when watches that had a Swiss movement and them were just so crazily marked up uh, versus something with an Asian movement. Now you're starting to see people are able to start, get, you know, having really nice access and good accounts um, where they can move these guys in volume and still offer them at a really great price. So kudos uh, to the team uh, at Axios and of course Zelos um, and, and you know and the parent level um, for being able to source and provide really great priced um, you know Swiss movements. Um, now as far as uh, the dial hands and loom go, a pretty standard diver affair when you look at it. Applied indices, you actually have a black sunburst dial. I don't think the camera's gonna be able to pick it up. It's gonna make this thing look a lot glossier. You'll probably be able to see it once you get to those low light transition shots. Um, but just at face value, it's it's really not until you're in very, very direct sunlight that you're gonna notice that this actually does have a really nice sunburst sheen to it, which I think is a nice touch. It's not an overly done. It's nice to have that kind of duality of uh, kind of a glossy finish, but also a sunburst finish underneath when you really get uh, some direct light on there. Now, I really like the sizing and the proportions of everything there, the hand weights and the thickness, uh, of course, on the indices, and then, um, of course, the index uh, that goes all the way around the uh, dive time bezel. Um, so really handsome. And then you also do have that color matched date disc there at the uh, six o'clock. So nice level of symmetry from that standpoint. Um, C3 Swiss Super Luminova all the way around. Uh, this thing is also water resistant to 500 meters, which is amazing, especially considering the fact that it's not that much thicker than you might expect uh, a 300 meter diver to be at this price point, or even some 200 meter divers. So um, that thickness is not too shabby at all, considering that, yeah, it's 500 meters of water resistance. Um, really nice uh, bracelet, as you can see here, everything solid, screw in. And then you do have this really, really handsome clasp, really well done. Look at the brushing, look at the, the beveling there. They even got it to go over the flip lock, which I haven't seen anybody do, at least not this good, because it sure didn't stand out if they did do it. Look at that, that's nice. And, and there's not a lot of gap. I can't, if I play with this, there's minimum movement that's making it seem like anything's rising up. So the tolerance is nice and tight. Of course, you're gonna have these great micro adjusts. It does taper down from 20 millimeters down to 18. Then you have, of course, the milled double locking clasp. So you have flip lock and then you have the push button lock. And then all this, of course, is milled out. Really nice, super solid. Um, and then it does have screw in um, Connectors. One of the things about these particular screws that I will recommend uh, when you're sizing, uh, don't force the screws. Uh, if you start getting some resistance, actually just reverse 
um, basically trying to screw them out and then push down as you're basically unscrewing and it'll realign it and then it should go in really easy. Um, so that's just something that I kind of picked up on um, while I was uh, doing this and, and a couple of other, um, you know, straps, I'm sorry, yeah, bracelets in the past, sizing them with screw links. That's something that I find to be a nice trick that has saved me from stripping out a lot of, of, of links in the past, just because uh, I know there's always kind of, hey, well, if it's lined up and it's able to screw in, it must be threading. It's not always threading. And uh, some of the, the screws that they use actually aren't even threaded at the tip. They're actually rounded at the tip and then threaded further up the neck. So sometimes you just have to really get that alignment uh, really nice and dialed in there. So something to keep in mind. Um, so with all of that said, I mean, let's just go ahead and get this bad boy on brace, um, on wrist. All right, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this 40 millimeter classic uh, layout is gonna wear really well. And then when you look at the way that it sits and wraps, I think it also does a very nice job of that. Get a little bit of smudges off there. So, as you can see, the end links do a nice job of kind of wrapping it around and, and rearranging everything. And then as far as the links go, they're nice and short. Um, really, the three link uh, layout is very handsome. Um, great finishing, everything is fully brushed, even the sides there. And then you do have these great chamfers of high polish, which look great and do tie into the high polish on the sides of the case. Then you have the great, of course, the high polished uh, bezel insert and bezel itself and then the polished hands and then the, uh, the little logo there. Really nice minimalist look. Of course, definitely reminiscent of, uh, you know, Rolex as far as the colorway and the general silhouette. But I think when you look up close, you're not really trying to fool anybody. It's definitely something that's still trying to do its own thing. Of course, not to the level that Zelos would do because they just are so unique in so many ways. But, um, you know, and, and a very classic look. So if there's those of you that are kind of on the fence about maybe a sub homage, but you're just so into that look, um, you can definitely get something like this and I think maybe have it be a little bit more comfortable on the wrist because you're not worried about it, uh, you know, with Mercedes hands or something like that or just being such a one-to-one -one copy because you're going to have something that where they actually did add, I think, some nice aesthetic fun and playfulness to the design. So with that said, let's go ahead and move into some loom shots and low light transition. All right, let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, this thing is an absolute loom beast. Now, although they only advertise that this thing has C3, I'm pretty sure that's BGW9 and the index is there. So you get a nice little kind of two-tone little loom affair when it comes to that. And just because I'm such a fan of how brightly this is going, I might even supercharge it. Oh, sorry, a little bit and hit it with the black light. So you guys can kind of see this thing. It just even a fuller blast as if you were to walk in from a sunny day or something um, and really get a look at how nice that loom is pumping away. So another thing I like to do is uh, I also like to do something I like to call a low light transition. And it's mostly because um, one, it looks cool and uh, people seem to like it. But one of the reasons why I started doing it is because you know what, you're not always going to uh, have your watch in a fully well lit area or out on a bright summer day out in direct sunlight you're going to be transitioning in between uh, buildings or vehicles um you know well lit and not so well lit areas um, and another nice thing is you can get a nice look at the finishing because my hot studio lights end up washing out a lot of those fine details in the brushing but you can get a look here at how um uniform that brushing is not quite a luxury level or anything like that but a very nice uniform look to it and then of course you get an idea of that color palette i think the blue is reading as much brighter uh in the studio lights than it does actually in real life i think it almost looks like just it's black and then the blue can kind of just almost be like a reflection from time to time so it's a lot more subtle actually 
um, in person. And, and I think, of course, it's quite dynamic uh, when, when fully loomed there in the dark. But uh, generally, it's, it's quite subdued and subtle when it comes to how this thing looks, um, you know, in a well-lit area. So of, on the wrist, uh, you know, as far as closing thoughts go, you know, cl classic proportions and wear. As far as model variants go, there's two uh, black dial options. Of course, this with the uh, Batman bezel, or there's also gilt hands and dial option, which looked really cool. I think it actually had a red trimmed uh, triangle uh, at the 12 o'clock pip, which looked really cool. And there's also two blue dial options. Uh, there's one with orange accents that's very dynamic, and there's one with just kind of a single red second hand uh, accent. So two blue options out of those two i almost um, it's tough because i think that red seconds hand on the blue very subtle is quite handsome but i think uh the kind of liveliness that the orange accents um might be my pick of the bunch just because it just adds a nice dynamic flair to it um that is something that you won't uh, find on any type of, of rolex so um I, I really do enjoy that and of course there's a green dial option uh, green on green uh, kind of a hulk theme um it looks really handsome, but of course, with just a bit more color play um, uh, from the team, of because you know that's what they like to do. They like to be creative. Um, so they're still adding a splash again on top of a silhouette that's quite recognizable. Um, now, as far as comparable models, you know, there's a lot of sub homages out there, um, you know, but there are really none with this combination of spec, design, and value. I mean, when you look at the the value right not just the cost the value what you're getting for that cost right um it's really tough to have anything that that lines up with this thing um especially if you can get it for under 400 bucks you know at the 399 kind of early bird pricing uh that's pretty insane um this thing is really well specced and these are the type of watches that have people swear off the mainstream because they just offer you so much for so little um, and that's directly from a company, you know, versus you're buying something great market or this or that, where you're just so departed from the brand. Here you're dealing directly with them and you're getting a really nice quality product. So really the bottom line is you're getting a lot of watch for the money, especially again at those kind of early bird launch prices. So definitely check out the links uh, below to kind of you know, get on the mailing list, get an idea of when these are released and definitely try to claim your spot if you're interested in this particular model. Um, and definitely check out the other color um, options and hopefully you'll start seeing these pop up more and more on YouTube. Um, because you know what, uh, I think brands like this that are really uh, market oriented, they're not just trying to build their idea of the best watch they're also trying to bring to life the, the watches that the consumer asked for so i can definitely appreciate that so let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do a like and if you're new, please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys